Guy Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means fun for both young and old. Thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. But under the big top, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth, you see only part of the story. Much of the real drama takes place behind the scenes of the circus, or in faraway places of the world where this master of the big cats has journeyed, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here, in Mr. Beatty's own words, is the adventure he calls The Princess and the Tigress. As a circus owner, one of the duties I enjoy most is traveling to far-off places in search of performers for the show. You see, one indispensable element of any circus is glamour, and one wild man of Borneo is worth a double dozen more talented performers from Big Town, USA. It was at a seacoast town in the Malay Peninsula that I found one of my most glamorous acts, or rather, they found me. I was jumping here and there about the dock to make sure none of my precious cargo was damaged. Wherever I went, I was confronted by a diminutive Malay who would place himself before me, bowing low. Clyde, don't you see the little fellow wants to speak with you? And don't you see that I'm very busy, dear? Ask him what he wants. Maybe he'll get out of your way. You ask him. I've got things to do. All right, I'll talk to him. You go on about your business. Uh, I say there, Mr. Beatty is busy. Can you tell me what you want? Uh, what well, me want on um, big name father? Me make a load in so far, keep on side. Hello, same old man, he catch a flog, and one of them go chop, chop. No other thing can do. Wait, wait. Uh, Clyde, I've started a flood. You'd better rescue me. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't you understand perfectly good plain English? I understand the words. It's what he means that stops me. Okay, little man, what's your problem? Sahib, you made it to one big name, a little side. Hello, Timmy, father, in flogger man, and I'm getting floggy for Luda, floggy young, she Luda, floggy compadre, floggy nipa, floggy wife, floggy cachilla, floggy shagam. Made it to one, take it one, and I'm a little side. Thank you, please. What in heaven's name was all that about? Well, it seems this little guy's a sad sack named Wana Man. Even though Wana Man's a grown man, his father always flogs him. Aww. He makes him cry when he flogs him, but that's all because, you see, Wana Man is such a large man. He doesn't look very large to me. Not only does this beast of a father beat him, but he beats his elder brother, his younger brother, his nephew, his wife, his daughter, his steward, and his servant. Well, the brute. Exactly. That's why he wants big name Betty Twan to take him along to America. Oh, no. What would that poor little fella do there? What a nom, I look to him, good fella, making all everybody inside glad. <laughs> he says he's a good man, always makes people feel happy. Oh. No, take him a lick aside. Me take him long, must get killing me. What, what was it about killing? Uh-oh. He said if we don't take him to America, he'll get a rifle and kill himself. Clyde, what are we going to do? My dear, it looks like the Clyde Beatty Circus is about to harbor a fugitive from the Malay Peninsula. <laughs> We return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now back to Clyde Beatty's adventure entitled The Princess and the Tigress. When I agreed to take one man to America, I didn't realize that I was really asking for trouble. About an hour before sailing, Harriet and I were in our cabin when there was a knock on the door. Yes, come in. Oh, anything wrong, Purser? Yes, sir. It's about that melee, Waterman, or whatever he calls himself. Waterman. Well, what about him? Well, where I put him? Surely there's room for such a little man on this big boat. Oh, we can handle him all right. It's the rest of them bothers me. Rest of them? What do you mean? Well, now, here. Here's a list of their names. Muda Yusuf, Idris, Mansour, Benda Harris, Bruis, Abdullah... Juan Ahmed, Korish, Wanda, and the giant. The giant? Yeah. His name, believe it or not, is Sri Paduka. He's over seven feet tall. Seven feet? Look, are you trying to tell me that Wanda Man didn't come alone? I'll say he didn't. There's 15 of them up on deck, and from the sound of the jabber, you'd think there was 50. Well, this is ridiculous. Come on, Harriet. Oh, yes, dear? We'd better see what's going on up what's there. What's wrong? It's the melee. Never what mind, happened? never mind. You'll see. Come on, hurry. 
Up on deck, surrounded by a circle of amused sailors and deckhands, was a knot of wildly gesticulating natives. They were of assorted ages, sizes, and sexes, and were garbed in characteristic costumes. Eventually, I was able to quiet the others enough so I could question Wanaman. Now then, Wanaman, do you mind telling me what this is all about? But these all are good fellows, then. They did to want to take all you, me, and the last inside. Just a minute. I said I'd take you to America, not your whole family. Oh, no, all of them and me. It was French, she, chorus, right, Jai? All of them, me, one I'm on. What did he say? He said they aren't all his family. That pretty little thing over there is Idris. She's a princess. The one that looks like a pirate claims he's a rajah. All of them are Wanaman's friends. All of friends, baby, to one. Look here. I can't take all of you to America. It sounds like they're going to argue the point, Clyde. It's no use. I can't take you along. You fella, you stand by. You look at walkabout. Suppose you fell the walkabout beat and you stand by. What are I'm talking about? He's trying to clear the sailors and dock hands away. Oh, oh, you're right. Then I then he's the That's funny. Looks like they're getting ready to put on a show or something. Why, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to perform. Oh, fine. We've got a ship to get ready for sailing, and they're going to put on a show. Hey, stop no, this! No, no, Clyde, let them go ahead. See, not too long, Miss Looks like I'd have to shoot them to stop them. For the next half hour, the ship's crew, the dock hands, Harriet and I, were privileged to witness one of the most exotic and beautiful performances imaginable. Those tiny people in their brilliant costumes captivated us all with their fabulous dancing. And when it was over, we burst into spontaneous applause. Oh, Clyde, oh, wasn't that beautiful? Sensational. What an act. Why, they'd eat that up back home. Clyde, that's an idea. What? Now, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Oh, I can see it now. The lights under the big top dim. The colored spots pick out the dancers in the center arena. The music comes up. When Harriet starts seeing things in her mind's eye, they usually come to pass. At first, everything went well with our princess, our Raja, our giant, and their companions. But then came trouble. Plenty of it. The source of the trouble? Well, as usual, it was a woman. <laughs> Come in. Oh. Well, Mr. Norman Carroll, how's the circus manager tonight? All your charges safely tucked into Oh, uh, look, look, Clyde. I know a circus manager has to expect anything, but this is too much. What's the matter? The fat lady run off with one of the midgets? Oh, no. I'm serious, Clyde. We're in for some trouble. What's up, Norman? It's that dancing troupe. The melees? Yeah. I don't understand. Well, they're pleasure-loving and have a tendency to be lazy, but they're not usually troublemakers. Oh, no? Well, then maybe you can tell me why all the men are going around wearing those wavy bladed knives in their belts. Well, that's nothing. A Chris is worn as part of their costume. They wear them all the time. With blood stains on them? Blood stains? That's right. A few minutes ago, the one they call the Raja and your little friend, Wana Man, were going at it hot and heavy with their toad stabbers. Oh, no. Some of the men broke it up, but not before blood was shed. Well, what started the fight? What else? A woman, of course. I see. I'll bet it was that little charmer, Idris. Right. Seems those two are both madly in love with her. That figures. Oh, well, we've got little Wana Man in the first aid tent. Luckily, he wasn't hurt bad. But we had to chain Korish to the center pole. Was he that wild? I never saw anything like it. It took ten men to hold him. I'd better have a look. Yeah, see for yourself. Come on. I was plenty worried about what Norman Carroll had told me. Although melees are ordinarily peace-loving, they are subject to nervous outbursts. On two occasions, I'd seen natives run amok. It was something I never wanted to see again. When we got to where Korish was being held, one look told me the worst. The melee had blown his top. I knew if something wasn't done to quiet him, he was due to commit acts of homicidal mania. For the present, he was safe, since they'd lashed him to the center pole with enough chains to hold an elephant. The guy's gone completely crazy. That's right, and if he gets loose, he'll run amok. Well, what do we do? I don't know, but we can't just leave him like this. Maybe, uh, maybe I'd better call the police, huh? Not yet. Somebody might get hurt. Oh, there must be some way to quiet him. Wait. I just thought of something. Huh. There's a name for this nervous affliction these melees are subject to. It's Lata. Lata? Yes. You see, the victims lose all self-control and all sense of their own identity. If I can work it, we can get him under control. How does this Lata work? If I can get him to rivet his attention on me, he'll imitate all of my actions. Sort of like, like hypnosis, huh? Exactly. Now, let's see what I can do. Get a couple of the boys, Norman, and stand yeah. by at the chains. When I give the word, turn him loose. Turn him loose? Not on your life. Do as I say. It's important. Well, all right, Clive, but I think you're crazy, too. Hey, fellas! A couple of you stand by the chains, will you? 
All right, Clyde. What now? I'm going to stand right in front of him and sway back and forth. Yeah. Now, if it works, he'll start doing the same thing. Oh, that's silly. Makes you think anyone that wild will pay any attention to... to... He's, he's got his eyes glued on you. Well, I'll... He's weaving back and forth. It's working. Now he'll imitate anything I do. That's amazing. All right. Now unfasten the chains. All right. Easy. Don't distract him. Okay, Clyde. He's loose. Get ready to jump him just in case. All right. Now, my little friend, you're going to be a little puppy dog just like me. That's it. Down on all fours. Good. Now, curl up in a ball and go to sleep. There. That's the darndest thing I've ever quiet, seen. Quiet, quiet. I'm going to stay like this till he really goes to sleep. Don't move anybody. Clyde, you mean you actually performed this lata on this little man? <laughs> it was lucky I knew about it. Well, we carried him to one of the wagons, locked him in. Sleeping like a kitten. You mean like a puppy, don't you, Norman? Oh, <laughs> have it your way. Now, tell me, what happens when this lotto wears off? He won't remember any of this. You mean he'll be well again? Probably. Well, you aren't going to let him stay around here, are you? No, it wouldn't be safe. This might happen again. In the morning, I'll turn him over to the authorities. Oh, poor little man. What do you suppose they'll do with him? Probably send him back to Malaya. Whatever they do is all right with me, just so they get him out of here. Twenty years I've been with circuses. I've had all sorts of things happen, but never anything like this. I should have studied law like my father said. Clyde. Clyde, wake up. Huh? Hey, what's the idea? Listen, hear it? Let me sleep. Oh, Clyde. Clyde, something's happened. Wake up. Man can't even sleep or not. Hey. Hey, it's a melee. Something's wrong. Hand me my robe. Oh, here. Harriet, lock this door after me. Now, whatever happens, don't open it till I tell you. But, Clyde! Oh, dear, if that wild man has escaped, oh, nothing but trouble. Oh, Harriet! Harriet, open up! Oh, just a moment. Oh, what happened? Plenty. Corish has escaped. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Is he around the ground? There's no trace of him, but that's not all. But has he hurt someone? Not that we know of. Well, why are the other Malays so excited? Idris has disappeared. The princess? Yeah. The Malays were awakened by the sound of animal growls coming from her quarters. Growls? When they went to investigate, the princess was missing. What were the growls? Curled up on her bed was a tigress. Oh, it killed her. No. That's the strange part. There's no sign of a tragedy. I don't understand. The Malays do. They think she was changed into the tigress. Oh, that's fantastic. Of course it is. Such a thing is impossible. We know that, but the Malays don't. You see, around the neck of that sleek and tawny tigress was the gold necklace that the princess always wore. <laughs> continue with the princess and the tigress after this message. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and the princess and the tigress. <laughs> Clyde Beatty has brought a troupe of native dancers from the Malay Peninsula to perform with the circus in America. They're in winter quarters, and two of the Malays have fallen in love with Idris, a lovely young girl they call a princess. The rivals had a fight over her, and one of them went berserk. Now the Malay has escaped, and the lovely princess is missing. In her quarters, a sleek and tawny tigress has been discovered. Around her neck is the gold necklace the princess habitually wore. It is up to Clyde 
to find the princess and convince the Malays that she has not been turned into a tigress. Clyde, you mean to tell me those people actually believe the girl has been turned into a wild animal? That's correct. Oh, but it's silly. Oh, I don't know. Imagination's a very potent force. Don't tell me you believe in this foolishness. I didn't say I did. I think I know what Clyde means, Norm. It doesn't matter if a thing is factual or not. If people believe it, it can make them act abnormally. That's it, Harriet. You can't convince some people that lycanthropy is just a state of mind any more than you can prove to otherwise normal people that Friday the 13th is just like any yeah, other now, day. Now, wait a minute. What is this lycanthropy? Lycanthropy is the belief in the transformation of men into carnivorous animals. Hogwash. Not so fast. You saw an example of it just last night. Well, you mean when you made that crazy melee think he was a puppy? That's right. Oh, that was just simple hypnotism. Of course. And so is Lata. Well, what's Lata? The state of mind people must be in to practice lycanthropy. Oh, here we go round again. (laughs) It's not so complicated, Norman. Under certain conditions, one can be induced by suggestion into believing he has been transformed into an animal. I'd like to see anyone change me into an animal. If they did, you'd turn out to be a mule, I'll bet. Oh, (laughs) well, all I can say is it's crazy. What do we do now? Mr. Bailey! Mr. Bailey! Over here, Dutch. You better come quick. One of the maniacs is in the arena with a tigress. What? Yeah, it is a little guy. Warner, man. Uh, yes, ma'am. I led the cat into the arena for her exercise. The little guy came after me with one of those wavy knives. It was a foot long. He chased me out of there and went in with the cat. A tiger will tear him to pieces. Come on, let's go. We dashed over to the exercise arena, fully expecting to find little Warner man clawed to shreds. To our amazement, we found him standing in the center of the arena, talking softly to the tigress. The cat was crouched against the bars, apparently listening to him. I motioned to the others to stop in their tracks. Cat's gonna spring on him any minute. I don't know why she's waited this long. She's never seen anything like the little man before. She's trying to figure out what he is. What are you going to do, Clyde? I've got to get that boy to back out of there. If he moves suddenly, she'll jump him, sure. Now, don't any of you move. Wanna man, what are you doing in there? Talky, me princess, she beat it to one. That's not a princess, it's a ferocious tigress. She'll kill you. Tigress no kill him, banana. Tigress eat she. Listen to me, you've got to get out of there. Big name, baby, to one. No so good fellow. Team floggy, Idris, lashy lash. One, I don't know, let him do. Harriet, do you hear that? He's accusing me of beating the tigress with my whip. He wants to protect her. The cat's had enough. She's going to spring. Dutch! Dutch, open the cage door. I'm going in. I dashed in and ran to the tigress. Her jaws were sunk into one man's leg. I had no weapon, so I kicked at the tawny head as much as I could. Throw me a stick, a club, anything. Clyde, look out! Load a gun with blanks. Dutch, toss it in. I've got one loaded. Here it comes. She's backing up. He's got her. Open the chute. Get that critter out of here. Okay, Mr. Benedict. Let her come. How is the poor little fellow, Clyde? Uh, pretty badly torn up. The doctor's afraid of hemorrhage. Where is he? First aid tent. He can be moved to a hospital by tomorrow, the doctor says. Oh, poor little man. It's a wonder he wasn't killed. As soon as he recovers and we locate the missing princess, I'm packing a lot of them back to where they came from. So, Father, he can start to flog them again? (laughs) (laughs) And I hope Papa licks him a couple of times for me. Where do you suppose Karish and the princess are? That bothers me. We haven't found a trace of them. I don't like the idea of them running around loose. Neither do I. As a matter of fact, Norman and I were just about to start another search around the grounds. But it's dark. It might be dangerous. The sooner we find them, the sooner we can get rid of them. Clyde, I'm sorry I got you into this mess. It was all my fault. Ah, it was the fault of your tender heart, my dear. I want to go with you and Norman. I don't think you'd better, Harriet. I wouldn't be able to sleep. Please take me along. Well, maybe it's better to have you with me. Come on. Not a sign of him. 
suppose they went off into the swamps, Clyde. Possibly. Did you check in town? We alerted the police. They haven't seen him so far. I bet anything they're still around here. You see, Korish is behind all this. He wants to get even with his rival, Wanaman. Do you suppose the princess went off with him willingly? Obviously not. If she had, he wouldn't be pulling this Lata business. Well, then you think he was the one who let the tigress loose, huh? Right. And I'd like to know how he managed to get that necklace around the cat's neck. But what was his purpose in turning the tigress loose? Revenge. He lost out as a lover, so he figured the tigress had killed the rest of the melee. I thought his rival was Wanaman. That's true, but the others wouldn't matter as long as his rival got it. Wouldn't mm. the princess try to escape from him? You forget... Lata. Oh, that again. If I'm right, Korish has Idris thinking she's a tigress. That I've got to see. Wait. Don't move. Huh? Do you see what I see? Yes. Over there in the brush. Shh, shh. Quiet. Hey, it's the melee. And the girl is with her. Look. She's walking on all fours like an animal. Yeah, moving along just like a tigress. Quiet. Let them get ahead of us and then we'll follow. What, what is he going to do with her? My guess is he's going to let that girl do his killing for him. What do you mean? He's convinced her she's a tigress. It won't take much more suggestion to make her kill a man. Want a man? Clyde, you're right. They're heading for the first aid tent. The three of us were fascinated by the drama that unfolded before us. Here we were witnessing one of the strange processes of the human mind... I'd read of such things, but actually seeing it caught up our imaginations and held us spellbound. Clyde, this is incredible. Fantastic. See how she glides along? Every movement is absolutely feline. Now, what's that glittering on her paws? Uh, I mean, her hands. Careful, Norman. You'll be thinking she's a cat. I'll admit she's the closest thing to one I've ever seen. There is something glittering on her hands, Clyde. Of course. Those are claws. Claws? That uh, melee's done a good job. He's fitted her hands with metal claws. I'll bet they're razor sharp. They're getting close to that first aid tent. What do we do? Oh, God, this is terrifying. When we move, it'll have to be fast. One slip and somebody's going to get hurt. I wish I had a gun. That wouldn't do much good. If that melee flips his lid, not even a gun will stop him. Well, then what's our move? Both of you do exactly as I tell you. Harriet, slip back to the main building, get some men, have them bring ropes. All right. Get going, quietly. Now, Norman... You and I are going to slip around the tent and get inside before those two get there. Can we make it in time? Yeah. They're sneaking up to the back. They'll probably crawl under the canvas. Let's go. We made it before them. I don't think they're inside yet. Good. Here they come. Yeah. Now what? We'll wait here in the shadows. Judge the distance to the bed where Wanaman is. But measure carefully, because when we jump, we'd better not miss. Do we both jump the man? No, I'll take him. You go after the girl. Good deal. Don't forget those claws. They'd rip you, but good. Here, take this blanket. Yeah. Try to throw it over. Shh, shh, shh. They're coming inside the tent. They're moving toward the bed. Clyde, tell me when... Now! In here, man! Hurry! Get the blanket out! Let him down, down, Mr. Bader! Well, tie up this wild man. He's strong as an ox. That's a way. Toss me some line. There. That'll hold him. Are you hurt? Everything's all right now, Harry. Hey, what'll I do with this pussy cat? Scratch her under the chin and give her a saucer of milk. <laughs> I don't think she's in the mood to play. The doctor will be here in a minute. He'll give her an injection. When she wakes up, she'll forget about being a tiger. Uh, if she doesn't, you better practice up in that la, whatever it is. Lata. Yeah, lata. Why? Because if she's still a tigress, you better change me into a tiger. I want an even break. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde will be back with a word about our next exciting story. But now, a message of interest to all of us. And now, once again, here is Clyde Beatty to tell you about his next adventure. It is entitled, Time Off for Trouble. It's funny how things always seem to be happening wherever I go. I remember once when my doctor in Shreveport warned me at the end of the regular circus season that I should take a vacation and rest my tired nerves, I wasn't too hard to convince. 
But the things that happened on our fishing trip to the Canadian wilderness, known as Lake of the Woods, were anything but soothing to the nerves. You'll hear the whole story, Time Off for Trouble, the next time we get together. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. The Princess and the Tigress was written by Frank Hart Tossing. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>